This is Donald Trump. Hello, Mr. President. Oh, Ivanka did talk to you about my little problem? That's good. So the desk clerk did screw up. I was to be your guest, and there shouldn't have been a bill. Yes, I agree. The desk clerk is incompetent. What's that? You want to tell him something? He's here, and he can listen. Go ahead, Mr. President. He's listening. You're fired. I just told Mr. Trump about the Russian spy in room 2017, and then I sent him all the pictures I took. I hope the swamp gets drained. I gotta get out of this town. It's time to go home to Oregon. But first, I have to make one short stop along the way. <laughs> Well, here we are on part five already of this 1935 Philco Model 89. Hello! Now, I was watching a, a video of John from Arkansas the other day. Oh, brother! And uh, as I was watching it, I was very pleased at what he was saying. Then he dropped the bomb. Watch this clip. I was thinking about uh, maybe painting between the clamshells, this area right here, maybe all the way around painting it red you know I was thinking I said that would be kind of neat to make it look red anyway the more I thought about it you know I was thinking ah you know what bonehead would do something like that did you hear that ladies and gentlemen yes John from Arkansas said only a bonehead would paint this core red he was teasing me all along and here I thought he had finally changed his ways because John from Arkansas is the purest of the purists out there. Anything that deviates from the original radio, he will not do. Well, John, I'm going to paint mine red. It's going to look beautiful, just like the other one. And old goat, I'm going to paint it red too. So there. Hmm. This is the uh, volume control on the radio. <laughs> Remember I had told you that uh, it also had a, uh, a power switch that's not used and I was wondering if this was factory but well, just for the record uh, this is a Philco uh, switch and the part number corresponds to the code 123 so this may have been installed at the factory maybe they were planning changes to put the uh, power switch over here and have it all in one instead of having the power on here it certainly the way it was soldered in there looked factory to me so I just wanted to mention that another curious item about this radio <laughs> here's the paint I'm going to use this is uh, Rust-Oleum uh, Colonial Red new paint good stuff I'm just going to spray some in a little uh, Dixie cup and paint it by hand. Here's the tone switch. Now, can you believe these people at Philco? They actually put the, uh, the capacitor of the tone switch in this uh, tar here. Those people at Philco were tar happy. It's almost incredible. Simply incredible. I guess there's two caps in here. There's material out there to find if you dig deep. The ladies really dig these things, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. Looks like it's in a, uh, a little uh, basket there. That, that is some weird, wild stuff. <laughs> the bigger of the two is on here. I don't know what that six means, but this, according to the schematic, it's supposed to be a .015 and a .01 in there. And I like them shiny. I like them clean. I like it looking really spiffy. Mighty pretty. Mighty pretty. 
This is looking real good. A lot better than I ever expected, to tell you the truth. This will be Buzz's trademark. From every radio from now on that has a transformer on it, I'm going to paint that core red. Holy mackerel. And if you ever see one of these in a pawn shop, buy it. They're going to be collector's items very soon. You know, I've been asked many, many times why I use comics as a background to uh, my uh, videos. A lot of times you'll see this in the background. And I'm going to reveal a secret never before told on YouTube. The reason I use these is, uh, number one, You're stupid. I like the color. Oh, brother. As a kid, I loved comic strips, especially on the Sunday paper. So that's reason number one. The second reason is, is because I focus manually on each shot to get it as clear as I can. What I do here is, my eyes aren't that great, so, uh, but when I got the newspaper down there and the comic strip, I could just zoom in on there and get it as clear as a bell here. What does that mean? And that brings up another question I had uh, recently. The guy wanted to ask uh, what kind of camera I use. Well, I've got a couple cameras, but uh, the one I use most of the time is this one. Oh my God. This is a Logitech Webcam 920 or Model C920. It costs about 75 bucks. It's just cheap. And uh, this one uh, was the one that crapped out. This was my original one. It lasted about two years. The reason why I use a webcam is because I manually focus. There's nothing worse in the world than a scene focusing going in and out, in and out. Are you listening, John from Arkansas? All right. That's annoying as hell to me. And a lot of times I just uh, turn the video off if it's too bad. Me too. And this camera, you got to plug it into the computer because this is just a, a video camera. There's no storage on this. Not the commercial. The microphone sucks on this, but I use a, uh, a Yeti uh, microphone that my son got me for Christmas one year. So there it is. Secrets revealed. Here is the completed tone control. It's rotten, I tell you, rotten! I just put uh, a little terminal strip in there. I soldered the ground part on uh, to the base here. Aha! All right, what do you want? Polish it up a little bit. Big deal. All right, on to other and better stuff. Well, there's the chassis. That's about as good as it's going to get. I spent most of the day Saturday polishing this thing. Oh, this is turning out to be a total waste of time. Not bad at all. These cans look pretty good. Oh, brother. Most of these stains here, this will be covered up by the tuning cap. And the uh, tubes will be on here, so there's not going to be much showing on here. All right, now that's perfect. Don't touch nothing. What I'm going to do next is uh, relocate these two electrolytics here. They're not going into the cans, though the cans did turn out pretty good. Can I get you a beer? They'll be going here, just for show. Well, I better get to work. And now, here's a word from our sponsor. A crummy commercial? I'm going to see if I can get Peanut to roll over with John from Arkansas Treats. You want this? You got to roll over. Roll over. No, that's begging. You got to roll over, <laughs> Peanut. Roll over. There you go. Just a little bit more. You want it? <laughs> Gotta roll over. That, that's, you're cheating. Roll over. Okay, here's your treat. John from Arkansas Treats. <laughs> Even your dog will roll over. Here we have this very ugly, uh, wired uh, resistor. Damn, you're ugly. 
I sprayed that with alcohol and it really didn't do anything. I'm thinking maybe there's some wax in there. Let's just heat it up and see what happens. If you are looking for trouble, you found it. Nope, no wax on it. Let's see if I can just clean that off some more then. Well, I guess I just needed a good bath and a good brush. It's about as good as it can get. You gotta be kidding me. I think I'll coat this with fingernail polish just to make it pop a little bit. Pop goes the weasel! I'll just put a little on there and see how it looks. Put some over here. It's not that bad. Alright, I'm gonna do that. I'll show it to you when I'm done. I've also been asked what type of video software I use to edit my videos. This is the program here. It's a uh, Sony Vegas Pro 13. Great balls of fire! This particular video is the intro with Dickel from last week. When I do a intro or a special bit, I usually do that separately from the rest of the video and render it, then add that to the video. And the reason for that is because I use uh, many video tracks and audio tracks. This particular one had about 15 different video and audio tracks. You know something? I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing that. And you need that many tracks to get uh, the look that you want. Here's Dickel here. You see him in the blue background. But if I click up here, he's peeking through the keyhole. So that's what I use. There it is. Boy, Luther! I just measured it again and it's still good. So it'll look quite uh, nice in there. Alright, now we're going to take out the oscillator coil. Hold on to your hats. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. There is the oscillator coil. Very interesting. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to examine it very closely. Now... This is just for reference here. Uh, I've got a, a green wire here and a red wire here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wires. I'll mark the wires so I won't lose a track of where they go. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? Remember when I said I was going to do one block at a time? Do it very carefully so I won't screw up? Yes. Well, look at that. There's nothing but a bunch of labels on here. If one of those labels comes off, I'm in trouble. <laughs> if this thing ever works again, it'll be a miracle. But we'll worry about that later. Let's take this oscillator coil out. I'll worry about that when the time comes. <laughs> There it is. But ladies and gentlemen, seeing is believing. There's that little sucker that caused all the problems people have with it. Awesome. Look at that. I don't know what that was. That looks like wax on there. We've got wax on the coil. Look here, amigo. You got the wrong idea. There's another coil in there. Is there any reason why this is taking so long? I thought I'd show you my plan here to uh, put these uh, caps here on a terminal strip. Now I've got the terminal strip here. Now the bottom of these cans here they already had holes in them. So I thought, why not uh, just put a terminal strip on the holes? Holy hole in a donut! Like that. This thing's gonna be, uh, these are the clamps that hold it in there, and they'll be, this will be so, sort of like that. What I did here is I uh, painted this cardboard black, make it look uh, a little bit better. And uh, this is gonna go in here. After I get that, we'll put the uh, 
terminal strip on here. There's three coils on here. I'm going to measure first one here. 6.7 ohms. It's Greek to me. I think there was one here and here. 7.2 ohms. And I think that this one was one here and one up here. 6.1 ohms, so my coil's still working. Why mine survived and the other ones always failed, I don't know. George, just lucky, I guess. Maybe because unlike the uh, eastern part of the U.S., there's not that much humidity here during the summer. Oh, sure, see. Si. That could be a factor, but we also have a lot of rain here, so who knows? Not me, Mr. Roper. I think I'll just stick this in the oven. It's supposed to bake it. It won't hurt it. Uh, it's supposed to be on very low temperature for an hour or so. I'm gonna do that with this one. I was wondering maybe if you put some wax on it or something. I don't know. I will. Anyway, that's the oscillator coil that gives all the problems to all the other radios out there. Mine works. After all this, will it still work? Stick around, we'll find out. Woo! Boy, that's pretty, huh? Oh, oh, oh! Look at that, look at that, look at that! All right, there's the electrolytics relocated. I think it looks all right. There's a clump of wires here that uh, needs a terminal strip somewhere. So I'll work on that later. I want to put the uh, transformer in here, wire that up, get that oscillator coil back in there and make sure this thing still works before I uh, do the rest of the blocks. Okay, I've installed the transformer. Big deal. The wire around, uh, the wire, the wire round, the wire wound resistor. It's kind of a tongue twister. Wire wound resistor. Say that 20 times in a row. And the caps, this is all wired. Here's the oscillator coil. Now, I didn't bake it. What I did was uh, I had the light on in the oven. I left it in there all day and it gets pretty warm in there. So that's been in there. If there was any moisture in here, it's not in there anymore. All right, I got the uh, coil wires, and it's all ready to go. I'm gonna put a dollar bill in there. Can't afford a hundred dollar bill. I wrote the date and my name on here, and it says, if you're reading this, your coil is bad, ha ha. Devilishly clever. Give me back my dollar. I think that's cool. We'll just put it in there like that. Okay, I gotta hook up uh, this. I got my uh, grommets. So I'm gonna wire all that up. Well, there's the uh, oscillator coil all hooked up. One label fell off it and uh, I couldn't read some of my writing, so. <laughs> I may have some wires switched, but. Uh, uh oh. We'll find out, I'm sure, when we turn it on, all right? Here's Bakelite block number five. I fixed it, it's working pretty good now. Mm -hmm. Got 2.1 caps in there. I still have to rewire the, the lamp, but that shouldn't take too long. There is Bakelite block number five. Looks pretty good. Here is the uh, light rewired. The tuning cap wired. Now one thing I have to do, I have to put the, uh, the little connector on here that goes on the grid cap. Then we should be ready to power this up. What you're about to see is a matter of human record. Explain it, we cannot. Disprove it, 
we cannot. We simply invite you to explore with us the amazing world of the unknown, to take that one step beyond. Okay, it's the next day, and we're ready for the power on test. Now, uh, I had a bad feeling about this thing. I had a dream that uh, something was going to go wrong on it, and I can't put my finger on it, but uh, I feel unease right now. Now, I did try this without the rectifier tube in it and it looked okay but the rectifier is now in there but I sure feel skittish about doing this but uh, we gotta do it let's test it got the box hot this is hot we'll go up to 60 Well, I look pretty good. Maybe I'm just worried for nothing here. I had a lot of wires here that I had off and I wasn't sure about that uh, oscillator coil. But uh, that looks all right. Let's just keep going. Let's go to 90. I do hear a, a hum coming from the speaker. I got the uh, antenna hooked up to it, but I got nothing on it. I guess sometimes your dreams are real, huh? I smell like a, a burned smell or something. <laughs> Holy crap! Ooh, the heat coming from that thing. That's hotter than crap. That is a 5,000 ohm resistor that's uh, hooked up to the B+. Plus. Oh man, I knew something was wrong with this. I'm going to have to investigate this thing. Well, it's about two hours in and I have not found uh, what this problem is. It's this resistor right here, 20. This is Connected up to the uh, B plus here. Goes up to a coil here, a coil here, up to a couple of resistors here. And these check out okay. The coils test out okay. Well, that's about four hours into this problem. And I've replaced the caps in this Bakelite block here. And there's no change. You know, it's just like your uh, your confidence just goes into the toilet when something like this happens. I know that's something I did. This is what happens when you cut wires and uh, change parts and stuff. Well, after a very long seven and one half hours, you're looking at the culprit. Looks innocent enough, huh? That's a glob of solder off my uh, soldering gun. Sometimes I shake it to get excess uh, solder off it. Well, that's where I found it, right here. See where these two marks are? That thing was wedged in between these two points here. This side of the coil is connected to that 5000K uh, resistor. I'm lucky I didn't burn that coil out. 
Now that we have that taken care of, let's power this puppy up. Okay, that sent me back a day, so let's try this thing again. Let's see if it's gonna come up. That feels nice and cool. So far so good. Music scary. I want to thank you for watching as Buzz stepped into one step beyond, or we used to say beyond step one. See you next time. Don't be scared.